Well, hi guys. We're going to learn how to do integration by parts today, and we're going to practice it tomorrow in class. And we're starting an advanced integration unit, so we're going to learn three or four special ways of integrating this this unit. Uh, AB does not cover this; it's only on the BC test. And uh, so we're going to start with integration by parts. I'm going to show you several examples of them and when to use them. Um, it's it's a little technical. If you've ever seen the movie Stand and Deliver, it's like a mid-80s movie. Um, it's about a teacher in, in a really low-income school in California, and his name is Jaime Escalante. He's going to be in this video. Well, not him, himself, but uh, but he actually figured something out that was in that movie that um, some calculus books have actually embraced. So Anyway, we're going to start with this formula. This uh, formula is we're going to have two functions of x, u and dv. So if you're trying to integrate and you're going to use integration by parts, you're going to do it when you have two distinct functions. This is typically, typically going to be used whenever you have like an exponential and a polynomial or any transcendental function in a polynomial. So like an inverse trig or a logarithmic with a polynomial, things that you cannot integrate, you're going to use this formula. Once you practice this enough, you'll see uh, you'll, you'll be able to see it. But this is our formula here. So the integral of, of u and dv is equal to uv minus the integral of v du. And there's a lot of u's and v's, and it looks sort of uh, interesting, I guess would be the word. But uh, there's one extra thing I want to teach you, and that is how you're going to choose which function is u and which function is dv. And I want you to remember the word lipet, L-I-P-E-T. Lipid is going to be, in order from left to right, what you should pick for your U. Um, L stands for logs. I stands for inverse, any inverse function like arctan or whatever. Uh, P stands for polynomial. E stands for exponential. And T stands for trig. So if you ever have a logarithm in your integral, you're going to want to have it be your U. That's like your priority. Um, the last thing you want to pick for you is, is a trig function like sine or cosine. And the next to last thing you want to pick for you is any kind of exponential function. So this is in order. Lip it. All right, so let's take a look at an example. All right, we're going to evaluate the integral x times e to the x dx. And um, I'm going to do a very simple example over here. Something that AB kids can do is if this was like the integral of say 2x times e to the x squared dx. This would be a very easy integral for an AB kid to do because this is of the form the integral of e to the u du. Of course is e to the u plus c. And the reason this would be easy is because if we let u equal x squared then what is your du dx? Well your du dx is 2x which is right here. So this is a perfect little integral setup. So that answer would simply be e to the x squared plus c because this extra part is just the derivative of the exponent. But you can see here that the if I let u equal x then the derivative of that is 1 so I've got too much in our derivative here so I, this is not something I could do with a simple u substitution. So we're going to go through this is integration by parts example and we're going to write down lip it and we're going to look and see. Alright do we have any logarithms in here? No. Do we have any inverse functions in here? No. Do we have any polynomials? Yes, we do. So this is our choice for u, Lipit. So we're going to let u equal x, and the rest of this stuff is going to be your dv. All right. Now, here is our formula. The integral of u dv equals uv minus the integral of v du. So to use this formula, I need to find u. Hey, I've got u. I need to find v. I do not have v. But the way I'm going to get v is I'm going to integrate dv to get v. I also don't have my du, but I can get that pretty easy here by taking the derivative. I want you to see how this worked out with the u and the dv. We pick something that is pretty easy to find the derivative of. X is very easy to take the derivative of. So to get du, all right, that du dx is 1. So du is simply dx. And the way I'm going to get v is I'm going to integrate both sides for dv. So v is going to equal, well, what's the integral of e to the x? 
Well, it's just e to the x. So I integrated dv to get v, and I took the derivative of u to get my du. So my integral of x times e to the x dx is equal to u times v. Here's u, and here's v. So that's x times e to the x minus the integral of v du. So where is my v? Well, there's my v. And what's my du? My du is just dx. Now, I realize we put an integral in this formula, but look what has happened. I have turned this into something that I can integrate very easily. So my final answer is x e to the x minus e to the x plus c. And that's what you would get if you were to ask your TI-89 what the integral of this is. Let's do another example. Okay, x cubed natural log of x. Let's write down lipid. <laughs> okay, this is what we are going to choose for u. Do we have a logarithm? Yes, we do. So we are going to let u equal the natural log of x, and dv is going to be the rest of the stuff. So dv is x cubed dx. So with my for my formula, the integral of u dv is equal to u times v minus the integral of v du. So I need to find du. So du dx is 1 over x. That's the derivative of natural log. So du is 1 over x dx. And the way I get v is I integrate dv. So v is 1 fourth x to the fourth. So my answer to this is the integral of x cubed natural log of x dx equals u times v. That's the first part of the formula. So natural log of x times 1 fourth x to the fourth minus the integral of v du. 1 fourth x to the fourth times 1 over x dx. And this will clean up. I can take this x and divide it into the x to the fourth, and that's going to turn it into the integral of one fourth x cubed dx. So hopefully, if I've done this correctly, I create an integral that is easy to do, and this one is very easy to do. So my final answer here is natural log of x times one fourth x to the fourth minus. That's going to be 1 16th x to the 4th plus c. Okie dokie. Uh, let's see what we got next. Okay, this one is perfect for the uh, Jaime Escalante table. And I'm going to encourage you to use this table version anytime you have a... You can only use it with a polynomial, so you've got to have an x in it and especially if you have an x to the fifth. If I were to try to set up my integration by parts, I would have to do this five times before I finally got down to the answer. So what we're gonna do is we're going to make a little table. And on this table, I'm going to have u, oh, look at that straight line, and then dv. And I'm going to list, I'm gonna make my u be, well with the lipid, what would you make your u be? No logs, no inverse, but there is a polynomial, so it's x to the fifth. Your dv is going to be the other part, so that's sine of x dx. I'll just keep it as sine of x. What you're going to use do in this table, and this was actually very ingenious from this teacher, um, and he taught these kids to do this, is you're going to take your u, and you're going to start taking derivatives, because that's what we do with u, until you get down to zero. So let's take the derivatives until that happens. 5x to the fourth, 20x cubed, 60x squared, 120x, and then 120, then 0. Then you are going to integrate dv that same amount of times. The trig function is very easy to integrate, so the integral of sine is negative cosine, and the integral of negative cosine is negative sine and the integral of negative sine is cosine and do the integral again sine and do the integral again 
and do the integral again. Make sure I did that right. Derivative of negative sine is negative cosine, derivative of negative cosine, blah, 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 blah. Okay, yeah. All right, what you're going to do next is you're going to put a plus and minuses all the way down, alternating. And then what we're going to do is we're going to multiply down diagonally. And this is going to be our answer. You believe me, if we would have done the formula, this would have taken me five pages to do. So, the integral of x to the fifth sine of x dx looks like this. x to the fifth times negative cosine x. We multiply those two. It's in this, we're going to start with a positive. But since we multiply x to the fifth times negative cosine, that gives me negative x to the fifth cosine x. Then minus 5x to the fourth times negative sine. And when I do minus a negative, that's going to turn it into a positive. So plus 5x to the fourth times sine x. I'm going to run out of room. Okay, so I've done that. And then plus 20x cubed cosine x. And then minus 60x squared sine x. Well, I've run out of room. Just going to have to drop down here a little bit. And then plus 120x times negative cosine is really minus 120x cosine x and then minus a negative plus 120 sine x and we're out of terms and that's how you do the table method let's go back and see if I could have done the table method earlier and so, just so you can see it again yeah this one's pretty easy let's do the integral of x e to the x with the table method and see if we don't get the same thing let me extend this page. So if I'm trying to do the integral of x e to the x, then I'm going to let u be my polynomial, and my dv is the rest of the stuff. So if u is x, my dv is e to the x. Take the derivative until you get to 0. The derivative of x is 1, the derivative of 1 is 0. Integrate the same amount of times. Put plus, minus, plus and we multiply straight down. Let's see if we could have gotten this answer. Is it the same? So it's x times e to the x, there's that, minus 1 times e to the x, there's that, and there's your answer. Oh, plus c. I wonder if I put plus c on my other one. Mm -hmm. Nope, plus c. Okay, let's do one last example here. Here is two transcendental functions together. And we still are going to follow my lippet for what to choose for you. Uh, no logs, no inverse functions, no polynomials, but there is an exponential e to the x. So I'm going to let u equal e to the x. By the way, you can't use a table method here because uh, you would never get down to a derivative that was 0. All right, so that means that my dv is cosine x dx. All right, so the integral of e to the x cosine x dx is going to equal alright so I, what do I need here I need my du which is e to the x dx and what's my v what's the integral of cosine well that's sine okay so my integral is uv e to the x sine x minus the integral of v du sine x e to the x dx okay then with the previous examples once I got to this part right here I could I could integrate this side but look what I what I have I have an integral that's just like that one so I'm going to have to use integration by parts again with this again we would let u equal the e to the x my dv is sine x dx so my, my du is e to the x dx, and my v is what? What's the integral of sine? Well, it's negative cosine. Okay, so let's see here. The integral of e to the x cosine x dx equals e to the x sine x minus. I'm going to put parentheses here because I'm going to use my integration by parts formula. For this, I, the integral of sine x e to the x is uv, so I've got negative 
cosine x e to the x minus the integral of v du negative cosine x e to the x d x sorry that's getting, that's getting so messy there let's clean up some negatives e to the x sine x plus e to the x cosine x plus the integral of e to the x cosine x are you kidding me look what i have in this integral i am right back where i started so it looks like i'm going to be going in circles but notice that i have an equation here that is a true statement e to the x cosine x dx was my original problem right so um did I, I think I've made a sign mistake because this didn't work out correctly. So let's go back here and do some, do some um, fundamentals here. What did I miss? Because this should be a minus sign. So what did I screw up? Minus all of this. Oh, that negative gets distributed through here. Yes. See, that's why I opened parentheses. Silly Mr. G. This negative goes with this and it also goes with this. So that means that this should turn into a minus sign. Whew, got a little scared. Anyway, back to this problem. This is a true statement, which means that I can add and subtract both sides. So I'm going to add this integral to both sides. So if I add the integral of e to the x cosine x to both sides, I'm going to get 2 integral of e to the x cosine x dx equals e to the x sine x plus e to the x cosine x. So if two of those is equal to that, my answer is all of this divided by two. Oh, plus c. Anyway, all right, we're gonna practice some of this tomorrow, some integration by parts, and so I will see you then.